What if a scary Yakuza boss puts down his knife and puts on an apron? This wacky anime follows a ruthless gangster shockingly becoming a house husband. Despite his intimidating face, cooking and cleaning is what he loved the most. Will this quirky ex-gangster finally find happiness, being a house husband and taking care of his family? Or will his dark past come back to ruin his life again? Get ready for a super funny and weird adventure. Tatsu is a legendary Yakuza boss in the criminal underworld. However, the uncle has decided to leave the life of crime behind, to spend time taking care of his family and become a house husband. Although on the outside, this grandpa looks quite dangerous, Tatsu is truly a family man who lives extremely devoted to and loves his wife. Every morning, he makes a super cute bento box for her to bring to work. But today, because the missus was in a hurry, she forgot to bring it. Poor Tatsu had to quickly get on his bicycle to chase after her to deliver the lunchbox. He was just going to give her the lunch, but midway, the police stopped and questioned him about all kinds of things. They probably thought he was going to deliver drugs or something. After just one question, the chief policeman suddenly realizing he is the legendary immortal dragon famous in the Yakuza world. Seeing things were getting tense, Tatsu bribed the two cops with discount coupons, then fled away. Upon getting home, he was unfortunately met by a door-to-door -door salesman named Urita, trying to sell him some shoddy knives. Seeing Tatsu's intimidating appearance, Urita was so scared he nearly peed his pants. But with his enthusiasm for his job, Urita still tried to sell Tatsu the knives. Tatsu had heard that recently there's been lots of scamming going on with people selling low-quality goods at high prices. So he wisely tested out the knives before buying. Wielding a knife, he danced around wildly for a bit, looking very ominous. Afterwards, he took the knife and cooked up a delicious meal, even inviting Yurita to eat with him. With his conscience awakened by the kindness, Yurita decided not to scam people anymore. Today, the gangster uncle goes grocery shopping to make dinner for his wife. At the store, he runs into Masa, an old underling who had just gotten beaten up in a fight. Limping along, Masa keeps following and complaining to Tatsu that after he left the Yakuza gang, it causes everyone big trouble. But Tatsu doesn't care and goes straight to his baking class. Masa also follows Tatsu all the way there. Seeing his former boss baking cakes, Masa can't believe Tatsu has become so domesticated. He angrily confronts Tatsu, the legendary immortal dragon whose name struck fear all over town, but now just stands there baking sweet potatoes. Masa demands an explanation, but Tatsu firmly states he has washed his hands of the gangster life. Still, Masa won't listen and smashes the sweet potato cakes. This forces Tatsu to take out his mop and give Masa a beating that leaves his mouth swollen. A while later, the gangster uncle is again in a hurry, cycling to the grocery store for a sale. He swerves to avoid a cat and bumps his head, cracking someone's car mirror. By coincidence, the car belongs to Kunami Gang, Tatsu's arch nemesis. However, Tatsu doesn't have time to mess around and goes straight into the store to wrestle for discounted items. Seeing this, Kunami Gang is stunned speechless as Tatsu lectures him and his two henchmen. They retaliate by pulling out guns to threaten shooting, but in a flash, the gangster grandpa disarms them easily. He even kindly gives them a new pair of gloves as a lesson for the young men. This reminds him of when his mother gave him a similar pair of gloves when he was small, so he is touched and bursts into tears. With that settled, Tatsu goes into the anime store to buy a birthday gift for his wife Miku. After a long day, Miku finally comes home from work and is very surprised by the birthday party her gangster husband has prepared. Tatsu gives Miku the gift he just bought, but she says she already has it. Hearing that, the uncle punishes himself by cutting off a finger, taking responsibility. But Miku stops him in time by knocking him out of the window instead. Tatsu receives a call that the house owner is coming over, so he immediately starts tidying up. He gives the heaviest responsibility of cleaning the house to his new robot cleaner that his wife Miku just bought. However, he is still not assured, so he sits and carefully supervises the cleaning robot to see if it cleans properly. Suddenly he bursts out because it can't clean the dust in the corners. He calls it rubbish, then personally cleans every nook himself. While the poor robot is depressed, it accidentally sucks up the tail of a kitten making it jump up, knocking down all the items in the house. A bottle of red wine falls on Tatsu's head, the wine dripping all over his clothes, making the homeowner who just arrived think he had just returned from a fight. Today, the neighbor is busy, so they left their child Ryota for Tatsu to look after. Usually lively, Ryota now shrinks back meeting this gangster. Worried the kid will get bored, 
Tatsu invites Ryota to play games, but the games this guy has are also very strange for a young boy like Ryota. He is exposed to a totally new and overly intense civilization that he can't adapt to. Frightened, he cowers into a corner. Just then, the boy finds an extremely cute anime figure of Tatsu's wife Miku, and gleefully takes it out to play when he accidentally drops and breaks it in half. Seeing the broken figure, Tatsu's heart also shattered. Feeling completely helpless to fix it, the uncle decides to take the figure to funeral. Right on time, Miku happens to walk by, so Tatsu quickly runs over, kowtows to apologize, and begs his wife to be merciful. In a street corner, Masa is arguing with a gang when he spots his boss, Tatsu, walking by. Finding his backer, Masa loudly picks a fight with them. Tatsu doesn't want to get involved in petty squabbles. He slaps Masa, telling him to resolve his own problems. But this dimwit still tries to drag Tatsu into it, enraging the gang to attack. They smash Tatsu's head badly and are about to stab him, but is suddenly stopped by a cooking book. The gang is terrified by the ice-cold expression of the gangster uncle, and they all flee. With things settled, Tatsu returns home to make a chair for his wife. Seeing his boss so awesome, Masa is determined to follow and learn housework skills from him. Noticing his looks deteriorating slightly, Tatsu decides to go to the gym with the neighborhood aunties. He participates from aerobics dance class to yoga to bodybuilding. On the way home, he accidentally walks into the female changing room. Feeling he has committed a grave offense, he quickly kowtows, promising to throw himself into the sea to atone his sin. But hey, no one even care about him. This guy just overreacts. Today, Tatsu goes grocery shopping with Miku. She comments that everyone around is very frightened of him. But Tatsu doesn't believe it because he is always friendly to all. His wife advises him to change his scary outfit, but no matter what he wears, this guy just can't look amiable. Just then, a cute pink apron catches his eye. Without hesitation, the uncle tries it on for his wife to see, and surely enough, she loves it. One nice day, Tatsu's wife takes him car shopping, and after test driving many, they pick one that looks decent to take on a test drive. But because he hasn't driven since retiring from the underworld, as soon as Tatsu gets behind the wheels, his muscle memory kicks in. Looking around, all he can imagine are action movie car chase scenes and terrorists everywhere. Their plan to buy a car is scrapped. On another sunny day, Masa invites his boss over, but his place is as dirty as a pigsty. Tatsu can't stand it and helps him clean up. Somehow, the sight of the ex-gangster scrubbing clothes is even more badass than when he was beating people up. Not wanting to sit around idle, Tatsu orders a huge batch of household items. Seeing their home stuffed full, Miku suggests he sell the stuff at a flea market so Tatsu opens up a booth. However, business is not easy as some gangsters show up at the market causing trouble. Tatsu comes over to take them aside in council, not wanting to disturb everyone's business. Seeing the legendary immortal dragon, the gang leader shakes in fear. Tatsu just takes out some unsold items to give them, then sends the gangsters fleeing, terrified. At home, Tatsu also tries to grow some green for fun. Coincidentally, two policemen sees this and assumes he is growing something dodgy, so they chase him to the station. Turns out it was the cop's wild imagination. So they suffered a big embarrassment. Today, Tatsu goes to play recreational volleyball with the neighborhood aunties. They were having fun when a gang came wanting to play a friendly match against the home team. An intense battle ensues. Despite trying their best, Tatsu's team with the market ladies still lost but they were not bitter at all. Everyone shook hands, socialized, and took pictures together happily. Tatsu's wife Miku also got off work early today thinking she can go home to her husband, but he takes her all around town collecting discount stamps for a lucky draw instead. Tatsu had his eyes on a vacuum cleaner, but even after 10 draws, he still couldn't get it. Determined, he returns again today for revenge, but only manages to win a consolation prize plushie. To save face, the uncle says the only prize he truly wants is his wife's smile. He doesn't care about some vacuum cleaner. But right after saying that, Miku smacks his face off for saying, nonsense. The next day, Miku's parents come over. With his superb housekeeping skills, Tatsu thoroughly impresses them. Her dad even invites Tatsu to play ball. He remembers the first time Miku introduced this gangster youth. Her dad was so scared his legs turned soft. But now during their game, Tatsu keeps letting his father-in-law win. Annoyed by this, Miku's dad asks Tatsu to play seriously, but after blocking one fierce spike from Tatsu, Miku's dad gets sent flying and hurts his butt badly. Coming home today, Miku finds Tatsu looking completely frenzied with the house a giant mess. At first glance, it looks like terrorists attacked, 
But the one needing assassination today turns out to be a cockroach. Once an underworld legendary gangster, now Tatsu has been defeated by a mere cockroach. It flies gently onto his chest. Seeing her husband in danger, Miku rushes in, wielding a broom and wax Tatsu face. Instead, the cockroach. Finally, the uncle is forced to use his last resort, which is a fragrance oil diffuser. Making the room smells nice, so hopefully the roach will go away. With Christmas coming up, Tatsu wears a festive outfit to go out and distribute presents to the neighborhood kids. To earn a bit of extra money these days, Tatsu works part-time at a cafe. Today, two hot-tempered old men come in, and Tatsu warmly welcomes them, perfectly brewing their coffee and water. At the end of the day, he finally receives his wages and plans to save this money to buy his wife Miku a present. Because he worked overtime, when Tatsu gets home exhausted, Miku already prepared a table full of food. After the meal, he also makes her a lemon honey drink, then tries to help her relax in various ways. While Miku goes to shower, he experiments with those relaxation techniques himself, but resulting in his soul leaving his body to go heaven. At the supermarket today, Tatsu coincidentally bumps into Tori, the auntie boss of the Tori gang. After her husband died last year, their group disbanded. Tatsu frankly tells her he too has retired from the underworld and is now a house husband. While they chat catching up, Haim scans the wrong item for Tatsu twice, so she earnestly apologizes and refunds him. On the way home, this geezer still doesn't forget to ask for stamps on his membership card. Angering the auntie boss again. Miku and Masa want to prepare a surprise birthday party for Tatsu, but these two are useless, messing up the entire house. When Tatsu returns, he finds them in a pitiful state and ends up having to decorate himself, bake cake himself, and even sing happy birthday to himself. During the gift presentation segment, their presents are also quite silly. Today, gang leader Yuya and his beloved dog Pinky comes to visit Tatsu. He thoughtfully gifts Pinky a handmade sweater, which make Yuya very delighted with, and asks Tatsu to take some commemoration shots. Just then, two aunties happen to walk by with their super slim dogs, distracting Yuya's attention. They say that Pinky seems a bit skinny, so Yuya gets embarrassed. He says the reason is because his dog is picky with food. Hearing this, Tatsu utilizes his cooking skills and cooks up some doggy food, which Pinky eats with great appetite. Yuya originally came today to tell Tatsu a senior member of his gang wants to recruit the legendary immortal dragon. But seeing how happy he is living now, Yuya doesn't have the heart to disrupt that. At the supermarket, Miku discovers an anime cosplay event for her favorite character, so she drags Tatsu to go see it no matter what. On stage, the MC invites the audience to come up for activities simulating a rescue mission, just like in the anime. Miku really wants to participate, but cannot show her face, so Tatsu raises his hand, his threatening gangster face, succeeding in getting the MC girl to choose him. But instead of acting out fight scenes, he helps the two characters reconcile by sitting and calmly talking things out, perplexing everyone with the weird ending. In other scene, Masa just got an oven gifted from an acquaintance, so he invites Tatsu over to test it out. Equally excited, the uncle brings along a suitcase full of white powder that looks suspicious, but turns out just to be dry yeast for baking bread loaves. Still stuck in his shady former ways, he has to pack it dramatically like contraband. After enthusiastically kneading the dough, when it's time to bake, Silly Masa screws it up again by breaking the oven. Fortunately, Tatsu quickly takes out a rice cooker to bake the bread, and it cooks fine. But before they can eat a loaf, the young thug grabs the piping hot bread and carelessly smacks it right into Tatsu's face. On a nice day while hanging laundry, Tatsu notices his neighbor's place, billowing smoke, making him think it's on fire, so he rushes over. Turns out they were just having a barbecue. Tatsu joins them for meat, but after a while, the two guys realize they lit charcoal for grilling inside the house, nearly causing carbon monoxide poisoning. Seeing things aren't right, they drag each other outside, continuing their meal on the grass instead, to avoid another disaster. But before they can bite down, the policeman uncle drops by checking out what's going on. Deciding to sacrifice himself, Tatsu plans to stop the cops, but unfortunately, the meat hasn't finished cooking yet. Miku's workplace gifted amusement park tickets, so she asks Tatsu along for the trip. At first, he complains, but upon arriving, Tatsu really enjoys himself. The truth is, he had actually been looking forward to this outing a lot, 
Having grown up confined to the criminal underworld since little, Tatsu never had opportunities to go to recreational parks before. He tells Miku this trip was very meaningful, hoping today would be unforgettable. But unfortunately, rain suddenly pours down, forcing them to disappointingly head home. Summer has arrived and the couple goes to the beach again. While snacking on fruits, a ball suddenly hits Tatsu's face. It belongs to Team Bear, the volleyball gang he and the market ladies battled before. Hearing her husband had been defeated by them previously, Miku flips out and challenges them to a grudge match. Spurred on by the determination and vigor of Tatsu's wife, they thoroughly win this time. Lately, Torajiro's cake shop business has declined because everyone is crazy about drinking bubble tea instead of buying his cakes. So he decides to start selling bubble tea too. But first, he has to learn how to make it, and who else in this neighborhood is more of an expert chef than Tatsu? And so the tiger came asking the dragon to teach him. Together, they buy tapioca starch to make pearls, testing intensely, and then finally producing a delicious cup of bubble, milk tea. Passersby want to come try the tea, but are too intimidated seeing the scary faces of these two thugs to dare entering. After a while though, a gang does come in to buy six cups. These guys are so happy to serve the drinks and that's all they sell for a day. Today, Tatsu takes Masa to the local convenience store to teach him some household knowledge. But after wandering around, Masa can't even guess the purpose of any common household items. Tatsu is at a loss and can only advise his disciple to learn slowly. The next day, the diligent gangster uncle prepares his props to tell children stories at school. His story is titled Momotaro, about once upon a time there lived a gang leader and his wife in a mountain village. One day, the wife brought back a peach, so the leader swung his sword to cut it open, discovering a baby inside. They named him Momotaro. The boy grew up strong and decided to fight some demons threatening the village. He swiftly defeated them, but when Momotaro is about to ask the demons for a finger, the teacher quickly stops him, rewriting the ending to have the demons apologize and everyone live together peacefully. Hearing this, Tatsu is also completely thrown off from his planned storyline. Today, the uncle takes on the task of tutoring Ryota for schoolwork. The boy has an assignment to make a simple science experiment like a wooden pen holder box, for example. Eager to help out, Tatsu busily works on it for days, but in the end, no pen holder box to be done. Only the room decked out flamboyantly, almost like it's on fire. The child just wanted him to make something small and simple. Ryota's mom suggests they make handmade soap instead. Tatsu thinks handmade soap sounds unnecessarily difficult, but then he realized that it takes much longer than they expect. It ends up that Ryota has nothing to turn in after the summer break, because the soap making took too much time. Tatsu goes drinking coffee chatting with some neighborhood aunties, and through his gangster lingo, they mistakenly assume his wife abuses him at home, so they worry for the poor man. On the way to the market, Tatsu encounters a weirdo named Goda, who used to be part of the Harako gang that he destroyed in the past. Seeing his old enemy again, Goda gives the gangster uncle a disrap as a greeting. Hearing this, Tatsu fires back an even more scorching rap and even accidentally feels up the geezer's stuff, making him look utterly silly. Apologizing, Tatsu changes the subject to a pork bun shop. He raps about expensive pork buns, so gets smacked by the owner. Gata only managed to rap halfway before getting tongue-tied and admitting defeat. Today, Miku has to go away on a long business trip, so Tatsu finally has a wifeless day at home. He decides to relax and not do any housework. While enjoying a hot cup ramen lunch, Masa drops by so the two start gaming and chilling. But after a while, the uncle cannot stand it anymore. He nags about needing to go grocery shopping, clean, do laundry, cook dinner, etc., despite Masa trying to stop him. There is an upcoming Halloween costume contest with a year's supply of free rice as the prize. Enticed, Tatsu agrees to participate along with cake shop owner Toragiro, young thug Masa, and grocery store owner Tori. Despite trying hard to bribe the judges, Tatsu and his wife still do not win the prize. To comfort themselves, Miku takes Tatsu out to an eat-all-you-can buffet. Meticulously calculating to eat his money's worth, the uncle is in the middle of loading up his plate when he bumps into Torajiro over a slice of cake. After a struggle, some aunties snatch it away in the end. Disappointed, Tatsu goes back to his table but sees his wife manage to get that slice for him, moving him deeply. Today, Miku's parents come over again. 
Her dad enthusiastically charges into the kitchen to cook hot pot, worrying Tatsu so much. After a while, Miku also jumps in to help her clumsy father. The two bungle it up so badly that at the crucial life or death moment for their dinner, Miku's mom heroically enters the scene to save the day. As usual, Tatsu goes grocery shopping and cooking, but today he suddenly feels faint and suspects he caught a cold. Just getting home, he hurriedly drinks ginger tea, takes medication, and even steam bath, but at night he eventually collapses. Fortunately, Miku returns in time, whipping up a smoothie for him using all the questionable leftovers green in the fridge. One look and you know it'll be lethal, but with his weakened body unable to resist, Tatsu has no choice but to down the smoothie. The next morning, his cold passes, but now he suffers terrible stomach pains instead. With the new year arriving and his wallet empty, Masa swiftly goes to Tatsu's place to beg for red envelopes. Hearing his disciples' tummy rumbling, the kind uncle takes him out to do mochi to eat. Then they play kite and badminton together. Nearby, Ryota is also out playing with his dad. To celebrate the boy's growth this year, Tatsu gives him some lucky money. Then Masa decides to shamelessly demand Eng Pao money from him too. At this time, Tatsu, Miku, and Masa invite each other out for drinks. What a coincidence, they meet Torajiro there. And so the group proceeds to trash the place partying. In cooking class, the gangster house husband encounters an annoying punk who wants to learn baking in order to confess to his crush. Tatsu sagely advises that the key to making delicious baked goods is to pour your feelings into it. Only then can you capture that person's heart. Thanks to his guidance, though still imperfect, the guy manages to produce an acceptable cake to present his leader. As for Tatsu, he succeeds in baking a beautiful cake for Miku as a belated Valentine's Day gift. One of Miku's friends is struggling with housework, so she calls upon Uncle Tatsu to help teach. The gangster grandpa imparts his wisdom about supermarket savings, discounted items, economical water usage, and keeping detailed expense records to lower living costs. Everyone is discussing the shocking amount of money Miku's brother-in-law suddenly withdrew when right at that moment, he returns home. Her brother-in-law explains the money taken out was to buy his wife an anniversary gift. Seeing this loving couple begin glowing in romance mode, Miku and Tatsu swiftly make their exit. Tomorrow there will be an event to receive Miku's favorite anime DVD, but she is busy working, so she begged Tatsu to go get it for her. Wanting to fulfill his wife's wishes, early the next morning, Tatsu got dressed up to line up for the DVD. Miku had instructed him very clearly that when at the store, he must say the phrase, you cannot escape, I have come to catch you. However, when arriving at the shop, Tatsu completely blanks on the line and mistakenly spews, why are you running? Do you want to die? On top of that, his terrifying facial expression scared the female staff so bad she shook with fright. Realizing something was off, he quickly added, no matter where you go, I will find you. I will hang you up and throw you into the sea. The uncle intended to be jokingly threatening, but went overboard, nearly scarring the poor girl mentally. Thank goodness right then, a youth also came to get the DVD and said the correct password, so Tatsu was able to retrieve the item for his wife. That guy then conspired with Tatsu to go to another store, saying some rare premium password to get special limited edition cards. Eagerly, Tatsu agrees, but upon arriving, those items were already sold out, causing the young man to faint from shock. For a period, Tatsu and Miku helped a friend take care of her small puppy named Kotatsu. The cute doggy even gets photographed and sent to the Yakuza gang boss for him to fawn over. It's obvious he also fell hard for little Kotatsu. While snapping pictures of the pup to send, Tatsu encounters Kunimi walking his plump puppy. The two pups attract each other like magnets at first sight. Finding them adorable, both uncles rush over to dote on them. Afterwards, Kunimi decides to bring Tatsu and Kotatsu to visit his dog farm. Today, Tatsu takes Torajiro to do market research, preparing for his cake shop's new product launch. Returning to the store, Tatsu flaunts his skills whipping up delicious ham sandwiches and tea. Meanwhile, Masa has a bad toothache, but is too afraid to see a dentist, so he tries to secretly endure it. But it's not easy to slip anything past Tatsu. He urges the youth to go get treated before it's too late. Masa then tells him the reason. When he was a kid, his mom had lied and taken him to a barber for a forceful haircut, leaving him traumatized about medical procedures to this day. 
Hearing this backstory, Tatsu is unmoved. He aggressively knocks out Masa, then drags him off to the hospital to fix his rotting tooth. That night, Tatsu watches a horror movie with his wife. Verbally, he claims to be unafraid, but come nightfall, he can't sleep, tossing and turning while listening to music yet is still unable to relax. Glancing over, he sees his wife already blissfully snoring away, so he lovingly tucks her in properly. Going downstairs, he thinks to just drink some warm milk to settle his stomach, but somehow also ends up cooking a nice piece of salmon trout and herbal tea. After eating, drowsiness finally hits him, so Tatsu returns upstairs, gets under the covers, and hits the bed for a good sleep, concluding their long day and ending season one. Season two has only five episodes, so let's do it in one go. Recently, the Neighborhood Association leader entrusted Tatsu with the important duty of collecting membership fees, 500 yen total. With his years of smooth talking in the underworld, this poses no difficulty whatsoever for Tatsu. On top of that, his intimidating look quickly attracts cash flooding in from everywhere. Even a powerful mafia group, though acting cocky at first, cowers before Tatsu, then hurriedly coughs up the money. In hopes of winning her coveted anime DVD prize, Miku bought a huge pile of bread rolls, determined to finish the mountainous stack. But after just two bites, she feels completely full already. Seeing this, Tatsu and Masa jump in to help her eat. They valiantly struggle the entire day, yet still barely make a dent in the towering mound of baked goods scattered all over. Today, Auntie Boss Tori secretly whisks everyone off to her cat cafe because she doesn't want people knowing about her obsession. But coincidentally, upon arriving, who's working part-time there, but Uncle Tatsu. Ignoring the legendary immortal dragon's presence, Tori excitedly showers affection on the adorable kitties. One stray that looks just like her husband catches her eye, so she decides to directly adopt it home, but Tatsu stops her. This is a cat cafe, not a pet shop. A storm warning forecasted to arrive tonight ruins the couple's amusement park plans. Extremely annoyed, the gangster uncle starts cursing out the storm, then a random piece of roof tile inexplicably falls down, cracking his head. Seeing this, his wife hurriedly takes her deranged husband inside to bandage his wound. Right at this moment, Masa calls, saying he bought sweet potatoes and will bring some over to share. While talking, he drops his phone on the road. Thinking something happened to his disciple, Tatsu rushes out, meaning to rescue him, but finds Masa perfectly fine, happily snacking on the fried snacks. Suddenly, a gust of wind blows a sweet potato high up, smacking a nearby gangster in the face. Quick-witted, Tatsu retrieves the airborne potato and whips up delicious fried sweet potato sandwiches, saving the precarious situation. The scene changes. While watching TV, Miku mentions to Tatsu that her friend's child is hospitalized. The little girl loves the animated characters from Special Forces Squad anime, so Miku asks Tatsu to cosplay as them with her to make the sick child laugh. The two pour their hearts into it, but end up getting rebuked by a nurse for having a boring script, too much noise disturbing patients, and causing disorder. Today, Tatsu goes with his father-in-law to a poetry meetup with his elderly buddies. There, they encounter the rival bear gang, leading to an impromptu disrap battle. But midway while sitting to do ironing, Tatsu's back suddenly twists. The mighty immortal dragon getting a back spasm makes the uncle feel conflicted inside. Still, he stubbornly keeps doing housework, worrying Miku into taking him to see a doctor. The result is Tatsu getting wrapped up in bandages for a week. Recently, there's some strange perverts wandering the shopping area, so Uncle Tatsu taught his wife self-defense moves for when going out. Sensing Masa fits the pervert criteria, she unleashes those new attack skills on him, bashing the geezer's face until swollen beyond recognition. Her parents might not even realize who he is anymore, truly living up to the dragon's fearsome reputation. Recently, Torajiro's younger sister, Koharu, started her own fish cake snack stand directly competing with her brother's baked goods shop. Her stock attracts huge crowds diverting Torajiro's business, so he gets very worried. Right on time, Tatsu happens to walk by, buys and samples a fish cake snack, noting its aesthetic appeal, but sensing something subtle still missing. Then the youth borrows Torajiro's cart and whips up a sublime perfect fish cake ring. Tatsu advises Koharu that to create delicious food, you must infuse care and attentive effort into every step of the process. But mass-producing large volumes in a factory prevents imbuing that personal touch. 
Hearing this, Koharu collapses, admitting she truly misses the fish cakes she used to eat with her brother. Her reason for opening this stand was only hoping he would acknowledge her. Listening to his sister pour her heart out, the cake shop owner sobs loudly to the heavens. Winter's first snow has arrived blanketing the land beautifully, but the house husband uncle only cares about the moisture freezing on the window causing mold. Determined, he decides to clean it all sparkly spotless. After sending his wife off to work, Tatsu heeds for groceries himself and on the road sees. Kunimi's gang struggling to shovel snow so keen Tatsu lends a hand. He gifts them upgraded anti-slip shoes making the snow, clearing much easier. They even build a nice igloo house together. Today Masa comes over to Tatsu's place for a movie night. Miku wants to watch her cherished anime DVD, but her husband takes out the masterpieces It's Tough Being a Man, Journey of a Young Heart, and Overseas Travel, all sorts of genres. With too many options, Masa suggests adding some Yakuza versus the world fight flicks. After debating forever, still unable to decide on anything, they simply give up deferring the choice. Miku's colleague asked her to pet sit his dwarf hamster for a few days, but with cats at home that was not viable, so she tried depositing it with Masa. However, that guy is so broke he can't even pay for a mosquito to fly in his house. There's no way he could afford to properly care for a hamster. Considering this, Tatsu attempts bringing it to the Yakuza gang boss, but the clueless rodent dared to bite his beloved pinky so got immediately evicted. With no place left to turn, the hapless creature sits outside eating its green. Then two policemen approach, suspecting Tatsu of holding contraband. After hearing the pitiful hamster's sob story, however, the younger cop decides to adopt it instead. Miku has an upcoming golf client meetup that she needs to prepare for by practicing her swing indoors with a broom. As golf happens to be Tatsu's expertise, he decides to take his wife to the driving range for some basic lessons. He also instructs Miku to never hit further than the boss because back in his gang days, a subordinate who outdrove the leader got his head smashed. His wisdom is quickly absorbed and the two have a fun time playing together. Today, the husband leads an extremely important mission, foraging wild mountain vegetables to cook rice for the gang boss. Everyone pitches in digging up quite a nice batch, but afterwards a troop of monkeys swiftly steals it all, leaving them with just the empty backpack. On another nice day, Tatsu takes his wife and Masa out for hot pot, made with the most painful Sichuan peppercorns. If they can finish the whole pot, the owner said it'd be free. Tempted by this bargain, all three dive in, but the agonizing spiciness forces them to keep drinking water. Miku and Masa soon tap out, while Tatsu perseveres a bit longer before also admitting defeat. They assume no one could conquer this devil pot, but astonishingly, at the next table has a young man polish it all off neatly, then leave nonchalantly before the flabbergasted owner. To check up on Masa's housekeeping progress, Tatsu drops by the punk's place, but his house reeks like a pigsty, so the uncle gifts him some rare items like herbal plants and essential oils. At this moment, a small cockroach suddenly scuttles out. Masa grabs it to inspect, when without hesitation, Tatsu whips out a weapon, blasting both the bug and dude out the door. Recently, Tatsu picked up crocheting skill, so he decides to buy a set to gift Miku. Coincidentally, while shopping, he bumps into Auntie Tori, who is also looking to learn the skill. Great minds think alike. The two head to a cafe to crochet away. Finally, they produce two superb masterpieces, simpatico as artists. Then one day, a number of elderly folks gathered sharing spooky tales. First, Miku recounts working late one night at the office when strange scratching noises from the vents terrified her, drenching her in cold sweat. Hearing this, Masa interrupts her story as it's too boring and starts telling his own. One summer many years ago, some youths went to a haunted building to test their courage, but felt bone-chillingly cold. From the shadows behind them suddenly emerged an old woman rushing at them beast-like, then story end. What a tedious story. Then at last came Tatsu's turn. One rainy, humid day while napping, he hears a TV ad for a cheap crab at 10,000 yen for three. Agitated, Tatsu immediately calls to order, but when the shipment arrives, while exceededly going to put them away, he discovers an identical package already sitting pretty in the fridge. It turns out to be the crabs he bought a year ago. Tatsu freaks out thinking he got cursed by the crabs, and today they finally get cooked by him into a pot of crab miso soup. Legends said they are still waiting for the scary part. Today, a lady asks Tatsu for help. Her daughter Suzu refuses to eat vegetables, reacting quite adversely anytime it's brought up. 
And so the uncle secretly tries slipping finely chopped veggies into her food, but the sharp girl quickly detects it. Reaching an impasse, Tatsu unleashes a sob story about the poor little carrots, trying to evoke compassion so she eats some, but it seems ineffective. The scene changes. While out walking, Tatsu sees a homeowner struggling to remove weeds so he decides to lend a hand, also forcing his disciple Masa to come help. The two valiantly battle the weeds for a period, working up quite a sweat before the grateful owner offers them refreshing apple vinegar drinks. In another area, two children are arguing over whose beetle is stronger. Tatsu reminds them not to fight over some bugs. Then the boy in blue asks what he thinks about the two bugs. Tatsu proclaims the beetle belonging to the kid as the champion of the insect world. Hearing this, the nearby tiger takes offense to the elder dragon's opinion. And so the two grown men end up fighting each other exactly like two children's. Soon an all-out beast battle takes place between the mafia overlords cheered on enthusiastically by spectators yelling excitedly all over until the dueling beetles can't take it anymore and buzz off. One morning, Tatsu overhears the aunties complaining. Business is bad recently because everyone goes shopping at the mall instead. And so the gangster uncle helps them out by setting up makeshift stands selling anything from knives to wool sweaters right on the streets. Thanks to him, everyone's business becomes brisk. Loads of goods has been sold that day. And so concludes season two of this series. What does everyone think about this husband anime? To me, it portrays slices of ordinary mundane life anyone can relate to. Did you find it entertaining? All right, goodbye for now and see you next time.